even when the executive order was issued, no, this was in uh, signed in I think February, no, we as PHAP, as the industry association, we were always um, coming out with our uh, press statements, no, asking the government, asking the president to reconsider the executive order in in light of, uh, and this was even before the pandemic or the quarantine started, no, because we have always argued that um, to improve access to medicines for people, you uh, we should consider price negotiations, uh, bulk procurement or, um, you know, um, pool procurement, and then even uh, government subsidies on medicines, which is what is being done in all, almost all other markets that we are being compared to in, in the Philippines. So now, of course, the pandemic struck and all um, industries, including our industry, was affected. But we never rested. No, In fact, that's our motto. No, we will never rest to find a cure, but we will never rest also to look for alternatives for to propose to government. Because at the same time, our members have also been hit um, hard by this uh, situation. No? The costs of bringing in medicines, uh, despite what people believe is a, a, a surge in demand, has actually uh, gone tenfold. And we have not been passing those costs to our uh, consumers, not to the patients. We've actually been absorbing those costs. So we continue to uh, we continue to advocate on behalf of the industry and on behalf of the Filipino patients that there are better ways by which access to medicines can be uh, can be done at more affordable prices through those measures that I mentioned earlier. What's going on here is in the country, you know, 54 percent based on the statistics of uh, government. Uh, as well, you know, 54 percent of our um, expenses for medicines is still what we call out of pocket. No, so it's still the patient paying for the medicines themselves. So whenever they talk about you know lowering the prices, cheaper medicines, it's like do it that way, you no, know, to so that people who go to the pharmacies will spend less. But what people also uh, may not realize is that. When you compare the Philippines uh, scenario with that of our neighbors, let's say Thailand or the other ASEAN countries, even in other countries where you have um, the cost of care is lower, it's also because government has intervened. But their intervention is not in the form of uh, slashing prices at retail, but other, ra rather to have it done by negotiating on behalf of its population. You know? So they do. The government is the single largest purchaser of goods and services in the healthcare uh, sphere, which is what we already have under universal health care. The, the law that was signed by President Duterte early last year, as well as in the cancer control law that was also signed by the president. Yeah, but but is it being used and is it being uh, implemented? Because maraming batas tede, maraming uh, there's so many laws. As uh, our previous interviewee, uh, Congressman Romulo, pointed Ooh. out, yeah. they've come out with so many laws, but nothing was ever done by the executive or by the departments concerned. Yeah. Alam mo, Sito, no? when it comes to um, negotiating, the DOH actually, I think, um, doesn't realize how good they are because we have examples in their own, uh, in the, available in the public domain that have proven that when they uh, come in and have uh, a set quantity in mind, no? uh, medicines for kidney transplant or medicines for breast cancer, they actually were able to slash the price significantly because they came up also with the volume. So in other words, you know, you, what they call yung buntuhan, you know, when you know how much you have to buy, well, how, the quantities that you have to buy, you can actually come to the table and say, look, this is how much we need. What's your price? And that's where you can get a negotiation going. 